All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good, and please invite your friends. And if you are a Muslim, feel free to join us in this uh, time of conversation, if we can say a dialogue. But you know, it's, it's simply when I speak to Muslims, sometimes I feel I'm talking to nobody because Muslims are not even listening. Uh, before we start today, you know, I want to show you an example of deception and misleading which Muslims always they practice. Uh, actually, I was just talking to Brother Amir, and in case you do not know who is he, uh, he is uh, from uh, originally from Iran who left Islam, and he have a big uh, page in Facebook, and Facebook they deleted his page. Uh, why? Because simply he's exposing Islam. So don't be disappointed. This is very easy. I mean, people who know you, they will follow you. It doesn't matter where you go. You can open a new account in two minutes, and people will come. And uh, I, I want to remind people that uh, uh, there is a good website which is owned by conservative people. Muslims cannot play games with there. There, it's called Minds.com. Uh, this website, I have an account already there, and I advise people to subscribe to my account there. Uh, in order, you know, as a backup. Because you know it doesn't matter really. You lose an account every day. We open ten account every day. That is not a problem. But this is my address. Remember it, please, and please subscribe in that account. And for sure, we have uh, Patreon.com, where always you can contact me or follow up with my uh, last location or last update. Which means, you know, if we lose an account, as what happened to Amir, uh, you know, we can have a new account and people they follow. It doesn't matter where they go. I mean, who care? Because people, they are coming to listen to you. It doesn't matter where you go. The stage is not important. And just always keep in touch. M you know, create many accounts, many places, so you can update people, where are you now? So they will not be confused about where to find you. And that's very easy uh, thing to do. Uh, so uh, subscribe to that. Uh, you know, this is my Twitter, just in case, you know, always. Just have many backup. Uh, this is my Facebook. And uh, for sure, we have Patreon.com where you guys can always uh, contact me or make a donation in case you care to do so. But I know many of you don't care to do so. Thank you. Anyway, so today we have we have before we start about our topic, we need to answer a, a Abdul who posted something in YouTube, and this thing is really you Christians cannot answer. I mean, this guy is super super smart. Uh, this guy, he, he, I think he, uh, you know, you, you know him. He don't dare to call me. He posted this. His name is A of Abrams. I said goodbye to you because you are you are brainwashed. I mean, look who is the one talking about brainwashing thing. The one who believed that God will make his private part endless is talking about brainwashing. The God who the guy who believed that his God would promise him. Naked women in Las Vegas, 7 Eleven is talking about the brainwashing. A river of wine. I mean, a river of wine. <laughs> this what's wrong with this God? He forbid wine in earth. He make it a promise in heaven. Isn't it that weird? And in the heaven is more horrible because you drink like an elephant. Allah, He promised you you will not get it drunk. <laughs> And you ask the Muslims, how we will not get it drunk? You say, Allah will take the alcohol from it. <laughs> so if there is no alcohol, this is not wine, my friend, no more. This is just a, a juice. <laughs> it's, it says in the Quran, khamr, nabid, wine. So don't lie to yourself. What do you mean without uh, alcohol? Now look at this. He said, go and read your, your uh, see how corrupt it is, your Bible. First of all, my friend, just to show you how, how ignorant the Muslims are, when the Muslims speak about our Bible, he is speaking about the Bible of Allah. And this is the question we need to ask the Muslims is, where is the Bible which Allah, the teaching, the revelation Allah, he gave to Jesus? Where we can find it, they will say to you, it's corrupt. So you are saying to me, the teaching of Allah is corrupt. So what's my problem? Go, this is this is, should, should go to you. Go and read the corrupt teaching of Allah. This is how stupid your God is to the point he cannot protect his book. Have you ever heard of God? He sent the book, but he cannot protect it. Why? He's weak. He's sleeping. He's shrinking, snoring, snoring, whatever. What, what's happening? Why Allah cannot protect it? Allah, he sent 124,000 prophets. 
I don't know the number is so small man 124,000 profit all those profits their books is gone except one prophet his name is Muhammad <laughs> and he is the last prophet and Allah provide him with the last donkey of 60 donkeys which Allah created for all prophets <laughs> you know, Muhammad told them that there is a donkey his name is Yafur if you have my actually I made a video about it it's a cartoon you can search it and watch it it's all is coming from Islamic you know authentic sources Yafur is a donkey which supposedly used to be owned by a Jew and Muhammad he gave him the name Yafur otherwise the donkey he used to have a Jewish name uh, the owner of the donkey used to make the Yafur hungry and Muhammad one day he killed the Jew he stole his sandals he took some the money and the gold with him and the silver and he took in the top of that of his sandals and the money a donkey he, and he called him Yafur so Muhammad he have a speech with the Yafur and he told him do you like females the first time a prophet of God is speaking to, to an animal he says to him do you like females I mean what come to the, to the mind of Muhammad to ask such a question do you like females <laughs> what a conversation but you know we need to understand this is like this is a this is a conversation between two dudes you know what I mean the first dude is Muhammad the second dude is the donkey so the first dude said to the second dude do you like females <laughs> anyway let it go let it go so here he is talking about corrupt stupid blah 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 and uh, what everything he said in this line in those lines is in islam not in our teaching the fifth porn the fifth the porn your prophet he used to take a shower in water have dead dogs and women of blood from period and even the hadith says it is stink and garbage women blood dogs dead dogs who's talking about fifth about porn when you're a prophet describe the size of the women breast in the Quran describe in the hadith the size of her ass describe the size of your penis when you're a prophet he says that Allah will give you a, a penis will never go soft where who what is the porn you see one of the funny things about Muslims hypocrisy the that was saying for three four five years that the song of songs is about porn and one day did that he appear in the stage because somebody told him do you know that Muhammad is in the song of song suddenly the song of song which was a porn poet for the Muslims for a long time suddenly it became where the name of the Prophet is found do you see the hypocrisy and since then the Muslim don't speak against the sense that song of songs no more so the Song of Songs was porn. Tell the that say that the name of Muhammadim, Muhammadim, Madim, Madim, Madim is there. And now as long Muhammadim, Madim, 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 them, 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 them there. So this is not a porn no more. <laughs> pedophilia. Look who's talking about pedophilia. A prophet. You're a prophet himself who had sex with sexual relationship with six years old girl. And you are talking about pedophilia. A Muslim is the last one who can talk about but be your best man you see in a Christianity in a Christianity Jesus said whoever heard the little ones is better for him to put a milestone in his neck and throw himself in the deep ocean what your prophet said about doing sexual act with children he encouraged him and I you know we show every time we go on an air we show that proves starting from himself Encouraging Muslims to do have sex with the children's making chapter in the Quran chapter 64 verse number four About about uh, the divorce divorce of the children's If we go uh, 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 Sorry chapter uh, number 65 not 64 uh, chapter 65 verse number four. Let us go to verse number four It's about what? It's about divorcing little children. Who is the bidophoria? If your prophet arrived to the airport in my city, he will be arrested immediately. Especially if he come with his little wife. Hmm? 
Is that right? This is your Islamic interpretation for the Quran, not mine. Oh, Messenger of Allah, what about waiting period for those who did not have menstruation because they are too young? Like what? Like Aisha? And about, uh, he mentioned what? Something else. Hold on. He said, incest. Well, let me say you the incest. You see, in the Bible, if 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 the Bible speak about incest, the Bible does not say that God said you can do incest. It's your Quran. There's a huge difference. If the Bible report a story of a person or a woman she slept with her uh, father or even her brother or even you, you sleep with your son, that does not make any difference because the Bible is a book of stories about people committing sin and doing good and doing bad. It's not God who said you can do that. The Bible reporting story in an honest way. But in your Quran, we will find that your Quran encouraged the Muslims to have sex with their own children. If we go to chapter 25, verse number uh, let us go here. Hold on. <clears throat> Incest, it's in your Quran. I never heard of a God, filthy God, like your God who say you can have sex with your daughter if she is a daughter from adultery. Read with me carefully, Abdul. Anything we say, we bring a proof for it. Chapter 25, verse number 54. I'm not going to make my own interpretation. I will show you the interpretation from your Islamic books. Uh, <clears throat> I will make you read with your own, your own eyes how filthy your religion is. What kind of God he says that if a child is a child from adultery, you can have sex with that child. What is that? This is God? This is God and this is religion? Okay. Let us see here. You see, everything we say, we don't make our own interpretation the same as Muslims they do for the Bible, making false accusation, because there is nowhere in the Bible that says you can marry your sister or you can marry your father. The Bible reporting stories about people committing adultery, committing sin, committing filth, and doing good and doing bad. Here, read with me carefully. قوله تعالى فجعله نسبا وصهرا النسب والصهر معنيان يا إمان كل قربة تكون من أدميين النسب وعبارة عن خلط الماء بين الذكر والأنثى على وجه الشرع فإن كان بمعصية كان خلقا مطلقا لم يكن نسبا محققا وإذا لك لم يدخل تحت قوله حرمت عليكم أمناتكم وبناتكم النساء بنته من الزنا لأنها ليس ببنت له في أصح القولين لعلمائنا وأصح القولين في الدين وإذا لم يكن نسبا شرعا فلا صار شرعا فلا يحرم الزنا ببنت أم ولا أم بنت <تصفيق> translation <laughs> to make it simple it's saying that Allah he made relationship by marriage so anything out of marriage is not accepted in Islam therefore whatever relationship come from that relationship which mean if you have sex with a woman and she bear a child for you a daughter it is not forbidden for you to have sex with the mother and her daughter why because she is not considered your daughter according to the most accurate opinion of Islam and I challenge any Abdul to say I'm lying now show me something like that in the Bible go ahead who is the Muslim want to show me something like this in the Bible that you can have sex with your daughter God saying that can you show me and you are talking about incest let me talk about incest, different story. What about Muhammad, you're a prophet, having sex with his daughter-in-law? Is that incest? You see, the Arab before Islam, they didn't do that. The Arab before Islam, they were more honorable than Muhammad after Islam.
The story even about Zayd and his wife is mentioned in the Quran. Muhammad, as usual, he used his God to make verses just for his sexual temptation and desire, for he is a perverted man. Chapter 33, verse number 37. Let us go here. You see, again, we don't make our own stories, you know. We show you what your Muslim says about your prophet, not what we say. I mean, what's wrong with this uh, window to keep coming in the top of what a design? All right. So what happened here? What happened? Muhammad, he uh, Allah told him, why you are hiding what Allah he told you, uh, hiding in your heart, huh? Allah told you that you, this woman, she will be yours. Why you are saying to the guy, keep your wife for you? <laughs> All right, read with me carefully. Uh, this is was Zaid uh, bin Harith, who had been prisoner of war before uh, uh, the coming of Islam. And period of Jahiliyyah, the messenger God uh, visited him before they called for a brotherhood and the mother to adopted his son, adopted him as a son. Okay, I, I adopted him as a son and then I stayed with his wife. No Arab do that. And even Muhammad forbid adoption just to get that woman. Imagine. Adoption was a practice, noble practice, a practice by a human being for centuries. And Muhammad, because he cannot have kids. This is additional proof that Muslims, when they say to us, Muhammad, he can have kids. <laughs> so if he have kids, if he can have kids, so why he adopt? Arab, don't do that. Arab, they do only adopt if they cannot have children. So adopt him as a son. And okay, what we do? We wait when the wife is alone and we go to the house of the son and we flirt with the wife. And we say to her, praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart flip for you. Huh? And you are talking about incest? And Muhammad, because now he know that people start talking about him, and this is proving that the Arab don't approve such a thing. They say, look here, he has married his own son wife. Do you see it? He was worried that the people will say he married his own son wife. Because this is the tradition of the people. They speak that they don't approve that. But Muhammad, he don't care. He have God. He have God, his name is Allah, who will make any sexual desire happen to him. He want this woman, he will have her. So he changed the history of adoption in Arabia. Just to have a woman in his bed. And this woman, she is married to his own son. And this is nothing but incest. If you go to the Arabic interpretation, you will see that this man, Muhammad, he went to the wife's house when the husband was, was not there. And he said to her, he flirted with her. Praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart flip for you. And then the description says, actually, you know what? If you have my book, how many of you guys have my books? How many of you have my last book? Sex and Allah. Get it. If you don't have it, get it. You will find tons of reference about the perversion and the madness and the sexual contact of this cult. This cult is based on sex. Everything in Islam is about sex. I challenge you to, sh to show me one thing in this religion is not about sex. Not a single thing. You see, those they don't want to do jihad, they want to join Al-Qaeda, they want to join ISIS. They are not joining for the sake of Allah. They want to die to get sex. The promise of sex. You pray, you fast, you bow down, you etc. All of it's just for sex. What you will go, <clears throat> what, what is the reward of a Muslim if you go, if he convert to Islam? If I convert to Islam right now, what I will get? Sex. As simple as that. And if you tell me sex is not important, then why it is everything about Islam is about sex? 
what I will be doing in heaven uh, 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 you know guys Muslim they believe that in, in heaven nobody pray to Allah do you believe it there's no prayer no more okay so what we would do there you eat and you have sex that's it I challenge anyone to say it's not true even I can show you that it is lawful for a Muslim in the heaven of Allah to have sex with all the forbidden ones which mean including your own family member some Muslims scholars they say this is not including the mother but this is including the sister the auntie etc your own family you will have sex with them so are you talking about incest this is Islam in the heaven of Allah you sleep with whoever you wish with whoever you want actually Muhammad he promised you that in the heaven of Allah there's a Playboy magazine What, what what we have in the heaven there is there is a magazine let's see here we go read with me carefully jama Turmudi. indeed in paradise there is a market in which there is no buying nor selling except what except what images of men and women the first playboy magazine in history oh sorry the banner the book there thank you for telling me hold on <clears throat> Because you know we put too much glue in my book, so because we want to be sure when people they buy my book they cannot put it down. You know. So, uh, so always you know always when you have such a thing, you need to wonder what kind of religion this religion is. Any Muslim can answer? Any you are talking about incest? In the heaven, there's a market, and this market has nothing except buying or selling of what? Of images. And what we would do with the image so we go in the market and we buy what photos and what we do with the photos we have sex with them yes you go inside this market and there is magazines and you open any magazine and if you like any picture in that magazine with those pictures by the way are pictures of men only read carefully with me please sorry picture of men and women not only women men and women so what is the images it is images of men and women and then if I like if the man who is the who is the one who will desire the image a man a Muslim man not a Muslim woman this market is not for women. There is women as a product inside, yes, as images. But the customer is a man only. So if a man he like the image, which what? Which is an image of a man or a woman. What is the images? Images of men and women. And who is the customer? He is a man. And what he will like an image of what of men and women <laughs> and you are telling me that Islam is not about is not a filthy perverted minded sexual religion everything what the what the purpose of this market 
what happened to the version Allah he gave you oh no this is additional man every we go to the market with there there's images huh? I mean I am sick of those women at home so now I go to the market which images of men and women everything the Muslim he spoke in his text is in his book as you see and we show it with reference and just to show you the deception the Muslim they say Look here, <clears throat> your Bible from Satan, Yahweh, Satan is Yahweh. Look what he said in your corrupt book. If you do not pr uh, proclaim my name, I, Yahweh, I will not curse, only curse you for generation, for a smear. <laughs> Always when a Muslim, he says something, go read it and laugh and die from laughing. All those things there is a there is a website you can go and you can read the interpretation for verses in the Bible All those things the Muslim they try to give you have nothing to do with what they are saying as an example in here It says uh, yes, it's written in your book drinking piss <laughs> You know read with me. It says it says uh, drink water of your uh, of, uh, of the thine when uh, uh, certain abyss uh, and piss be put it between two bracket piss you stupid idiot this is a verse about the man. He have to maintain himself and not to go and sleep around. God gave you what is lawful for you. You want to drink water? You are thirst. You have a thirst. Drink what is lawful for you. That's all. Have nothing to do. And this is not about water. And this is not about piss. You stupid idiot. But because you are a stupid, and you are a deceiver. People, they can go right now in Google and they can search what this verse is about and they will laugh at you. And you, this is why you Muslims, nobody respect you when you speak about Christianity. Because we, everybody knows, you see, when we speak about Islam, we show what Islam says about Islam. We don't explain a verse as we wish. You Muslims do the opposite. What does this have to do with drinking piss, you liar? Or what about the verse after it? In John verse chapter 7 verse number 37 Jesus say, said a drink piss do you see how they lie when Jesus he said the one who drink from my water this is his piss <laughs> you know people they they, they they just actually I encourage Muslim to do that always because this is the easiest way to prove to Christians that you are false like your prophet you see if a person not false he will not speak false and if a person is false, he will speak false for he is following a false man. A Christian cannot be speaking false unless he is not a Christian, for he is not following someone false. Jesus even forbid us from taking an oath. He said, either you say yay, yay, or nay, nay. Why? Because oath is for liars. Muslims, Muhammad encouraged the oath. Muhammad, he took an oath in the, in, in the Torah. And just two weeks ago, we asked a scholar, Muslim Sheikh, who have a PhD from Azar University, why Muhammad, he took an oath on the Torah. Anyone remember, guys, what he said? He said, yes, he took an oath in the Torah, but he don't mean it. <laughs> For his false, he's a scam. What it does mean that you take an oath in a book, but you don't mean it? That's mean you're a scammer, you're a liar. I don't mean it. And even the Quran make a statement verses saying you can take Allah will not take you accountable for taking false oath This is God and this is teaching of God This is a prophet Don't laugh please <clears throat> Okay, what, what is that? What does that mean? Allah will not take you accountable for your false oaths. You ask the Muslim, what is that about? They say, okay, what about you took an oath for your wife? We don't mean it. What? What, what? Look, look at the excuse, guys. Look at the excuse. Look at this, this, this filthy cult. Allah will not call you account to account of your truthless false list false uh, false uh, false oath Allah will not take you accountable for your false oath you don't mean it because simply you don't mean it so why you take an oath 
taking an oath which you do not mean it's mean you are deceiving people Allah encouraging people to take false oath because what Allah he care for is what is the intention in your heart <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> uh, guys I want to borrow a hundred dollar who wanna give me one hundred dollar I swear I will give it to you next week but in my heart I will never give it to you see I did not take an oath because in my heart is something else I mean do you see this kind of filthy disgusting religion this is satanic while the Bible forbid us from using the, the name of God in, in, in vain, the Quran encouraging you can take as much as you want false oath using the name of Allah just to lie. This is teaching of God. And when a Muslim says to me, Oh, don't you lie to your wife? Why do I want to lie to my wife? You Muslims, you lie, huh? Yeah, because our prophet is the biggest fat liar. If we go to the chapter of At-Tahrim as an example, Muhammad himself, he took a false oath. If you go to At-Tahrim, or we can go to different verse actually, but let us go to At-Tahrim and show you the wonderful Muhammad unbelievable here we go this is the wonderful Muhammad the prophet of Allah the best of mankind taking an oath taking an oath that he will not sleep again with his maid I mean do you see how busy the prophet is oh prophet why you forbid that God made lawful for you for the term of your Coptic handmaid He's a prophet of God sleeping with the handmaid and he have 13 wives And where in the Quran it says it's lawful for him to have sex with the handmaid It's a challenge for the Muslims Who is the one want to show me a verse that says it is lawful for you to have sex with the handmaid this woman She is a slave, but she is a slave of war the Quran supposed to allow Muslim men to have sex with their right hand possess and the right hand possess is only from the captive of war so where Muhammad here is making this up? This is what happened. Muhammad came home. So the wife, the, the wives, they came home. They found him, the filthy man, having sex in their bed. Usually they use, use it in the, they do it in the stable. Now the wife is not there, so he is doing it in the bed. So she scream at him. She make a big fight. So he said, "I swear by Allah, I will not do it again. Please, I will not do it again." She she threatened, "I will tell, I will tell my father." Those are powerful women. Muhammad, he need them. Even the Muslim, they say to you, Muhammad used to marry women just for the sake of political reason. This is how much he need those women. This is why he marry from his companions, the rich, the important ones. He marry from their daughters to make them supporting him. He's an evil man. He make marriages not because he want the women. He make marriages because he want, a, 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 you know, he have an agenda. He is using the women. And now those women are not good looking, but he need them. So what do we do? We marry the women, but we sleep with the slaves. We sleep with the servant. We sleep with the maid. We sleep with everybody around, anyone in the bushes. Or the women, we kidnap them. So now Muhammad, he made an oath saying, I will never do it. I swear by Allah. And then a week go. Two weeks go and Muhammad is getting horny again and he missed this beautiful young Egyptian Christian women who have been given to him as a slave. You see the Muslim, they say to you, Islam is free slavery. Muhammad is accept, accepting a human being as gifts. This woman, she was sent with her cousin and many other slaves as gifts from the Roman ruler of Egypt. Why Muhammad accept? And why he kept them as a slaves? Hmm? How many slaves Muhammad have? He took them as a slaves and now he is sleeping with them. And now he make a promise, he make an oath. I will never sleep with them. But Muhammad now, he have to break his oath. How he can do it? He's a prophet. So he have to make a verse saying that Allah told me, 
Hey, Muhammad, why you are forbidden for yourself what is made lawful for you? In different interpretation, by the way, as you see, this is the Muslim interpretation. They say to you, this is about drinking honey. <laughs> Why the prophet will have forbid himself from drinking honey and why the wife she will be upset from the prophet to drink honey And why in the world Allah himself is involving with drinking honey? How in the world a man he promised his wife he will not drink honey. What does that mean? Muhammad he take a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period and now his wife she is worried from his smell of his mouth from honey since when the honey smell bad It's honey He's not drinking poo-poo Muhammad he ordered the Muslim to drink camel urine, but now honey is a problem as You see it's about sleeping with the slave the servant the homemaid Mary the cooked Everything this guy he posted is a joke and I advise people always to go and read the interpretation for any verse He mentioned where Jesus said drink from my piss you idiot liar Huh? You see how they lie? John 7, 3, 3, 38, it says that Jesus is specifically speaking about drinking his uh, his peace. <laughs> Look what he says. The Muslim interpretation for the verse of Jesus. He's saying, the only living water we know is the peace. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> The living water is the piss. Oh boy. Uh, same for other verses he posted, like uh, Kings, you know, like here. If you go down, let me see here. Those verses is about war. Those people, they are speaking about war. This is why it says here, we stand with you in the walls. Your men standing in the walls, which means we will stand until even, even if we have to eat nothing to eat left, except our piss and our dunk. This is not about God saying, go drink piss and go drink dunk or eat poo-poo. Your prophet ordered the Muslim to drink poo-poo and you know that. Those people are in war, and this is not even here what, what you see, what you see here, uh, and this is the Muslim always uh, false fiction interpretation. People are in war, and it's prophesied in the Bible in different place that you will suffer to the point you will eat even each other. You will suffer to the point you will even use donk to cook your bread and then he says to you look it says here you should eat burkery from make make your cake from the dunk yeah this is a stupid and then now go to afghanistan go to the middle east and then now they use dunk to cook bread in it this is about the suffering of a human being to the point you will use shit excuse my language to cook your food for in that area there's not too much wood so what they do they use anything they can burn and the dirt of of the animals is very good for burning so this is nothing to do with about eating your shit you liar they are cooking in it and this is what you do as muslims right now you can go right now and search on youtube how they make a bread in morocco how they make a bread in egypt how they make a bread in syria how they make a bread in iraq However, as long as you are speaking about drinking piss, and we showed you, and anyone can go right now and you can search each verse one by one by yourself, and you will see it speak about nothing of what this liar is saying. However, I have a surprise for you. The one who speak about drinking piss literally is your prophet, where he said drinking piss of urine. However, this is not a big deal. What about this? This is your Muslim website. Did your prophet command people to drink in his urine? And this is the hadith. The women, she drank the urine of the prophet, literally. In the verses you gave me from the Bible, it's about people that will be suffering, and because of suffering, because of their anger, they will eat anything. It's a prophecy about something will happen, and it happened. Which means those people, they were surrounded by enemy, and they were angry to the point 
they were thinking about even eating the dead one of them but here look at this there's nobody is hungry and nobody's dying from hunger the prophet he blessed a woman who drank his piss literally and not only that he said to her you know what because you drink my piss from now on you will never suffer from any pain in your belly what do you say Abdul are we lying let me see if I can make the text bigger hold on I think now it's better so Muhammad he piss and he put the ball under his bed <clears throat> During the night, I rose and was thirsty, so I drank whatever was in it. Uh, you see here the translation. It doesn't say really, I did not realize what it, it says. I did not even, uh, uh, ashar, which means I did not feel anything wrong. It doesn't say what I did not, I did not realize what in it, which means make it by mistake. No, that's not what happened. This is a false translation. And look what happened after that. In the morning, he said, Oh, Umu Ayman, throw away whatever in the bowl. I replied, I drank what was in the bowl. He thereafter smiled as such as his teeth appeared, and he said, Be aware, you will never have a stomach pain. <laughs> False translation, by the way. But let us go to the hadith. This is the and by the way, here, here we go. This is the reference. Is the reference? At Tabarani, a kabir, etc. This is the hadith number. All right. In other uh, hadith, it says the following. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and this is, by the way, mentioned in Ibn Kathir too. Ibn Kathir, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, volume number 12. Let us see. Mm, yeah. I woke up and I was very thirsty, so I drank whatever it was in the bowl. The messenger of Allah said, O oh, Ummu Ayman, Throw away what is in the bowl. So she replied, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I got up and was thirsty and I drank what was in it. But this is a servant. She knows that this is where the Prophet he pissed. She knows. I mean, this is a servant. She worked there. She cleaned the bowl every day. She knows that this bowl is not for food. She knows it is under the bed of the Prophet because he pissed in it. So she drank from it. And now Muhammad, he said, He replied, You will never have a stomach pain anymore. Praise be to Allah. Which means the Prophet, he is encouraging Muslims after that, since then, to drink his piss. Otherwise, what does that mean? You will never have a stomach pain anymore. What does that mean? If any Muslim right now, he, he got a chance to drink the piss of the, of the Prophet, they will drink it because the Prophet, he said, he promised that if you drink my piss, you will never have a stomach pain anymore. And this is literally... Not like the verses you are quoting for me from the Bible about people will suffer from hunger because of war. Not about your false translation that Jesus said to drink my water and you say this is about piss, you liar. This is the piss of your prophet literally drunk by Muslims and your prophet blessing the one who drank it and promising them that they will never have pain in their stomach. And what about drinking the piss of the camel? And the funny, Muhammad is saying to the people that if you drink my piss, you will never suffer again. But he himself, he died from poison and his belly and his orta was cut off. I mean, isn't it weird? Isn't it weird? Really, Abdul? How come his piss is not working? Can't he drink his piss? The prophet in his element, which he died, used to say, Oh, Aisha, I feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my orta being cut off. My orta being cut off? A second ago, you were telling the women, if you drink my piss, you will be healthy forever. Where is the power of your piss? Or maybe that advice was a pissy advice. 
the prophet himself he died because of poison and what make it more funny it is Muhammad who himself said the one who eats seven ajwa he will never suffer from uh, poison or magic but yet he himself he suffered from poison uh, Oof, man, 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 what a stupid cult. By the way, there's a guy, an Egyptian sheikh, he want to debate me. And uh, maybe we will do it this coming Saturday around 2 o'clock, something in New York time. We will see. I will update you if this will happen or not. Until now, we did not confirm it. But it might be uh, early, so people who they stay late, they can join us. Uh, but anyway, if it's going to be 2 o'clock, I'm going to post in YouTube early. So you will know about it. Allah Apostle said, he who eats seven ajwa, they eat every morning, will not be affected by poison or magic. But Muhammad himself confirmed to us that he died by magic, by, by poison. And he was infected by magic, as we see in the hadith where Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he never did. In different hadith, it says the prophet, he used to imagine things he'd done, but the fact he did not do it. So everything the Muslims, they gave us in their false statement is against them not against us in the bible nowhere it says you can you drink you god saying you drink your piss as an advice have nothing to do with piss drinking this is about metaphorical about what will happen to those people who they are suffering from war they will suffer hunger and to the point they will cook over a fuel which is made from the dirt of the animals in different verse in the Bible, a woman, she said, she is thinking about drinking her. What about I eat your son and you eat my son? Because people, they are dying from hunger. The children are dying. People are dying. The Muslim, they will say, see, you see, the Bible says you can eat each other. This is what the people are saying. And this is war. In the in the war in Lebanon, you can go and search it. When, when the Shia, Harakat Amal, they surrender the area of the Palestinian Muslims, the Sunni, for more than nine months, the Muslim Sunni, the Palestinians, inside the camps, they start eating dead bodies because there's no food. And actually the Quran confirmed that can, you can eat anything when you are in hunger. Including pork. You see this verse? This verse make pork lawful for you if you are in hunger. Chapter 5, verse number 3. Anything is unlawful if you are in hunger is lawful, including pork, including dead bodies, including dead animals. All those are forbidden for you unless, unless, if you are in hunger do you see it so do you see the stupidity your Quran mentioned you cannot eat the dead ones you can't eat the blood you cannot eat etc and this is all is coming from the from the from the Jewish uh, teaching by the way this is not Islamic this is have nothing to do with Islam Muhammad is trying to make a religion and here this verse have something very stupid where Muhammad he said today I completed your religion for you, perfected Islam for you. This day, I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you. Well, how you say such a thing? And this is a chapter 5, verse number 3. How Islam is completed in chapter 5, verse number 3. We have a hundred chapter after. We have a hundred and nine chapter after this chapter. And you are telling me today I completed Islam for you? That's weird. <laughs> Islam is completed because Allah He made a verse says you cannot eat kebab or you can eat kebab or you can't eat pork. That's it, Islam. This is Islam. You eat this and this and this and this, and today I perfected Islam for you. <laughs> The only the only way to accept this verse if this verse was the last verse in the Quran and some Muslim they say yes this is the last verse in the Quran but the Muslim they play with it 
Now we finished answering this guy. We go to the title of our video. Why the Quran failed to tell us who is Muhammad? Let us take the names one by one. You see, if you go, Muslim, they say that Quran is a perfect book. Okay, let's see how perfect it is. I will give. I will do just a little test. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولِ Muhammad is nothing but a prophet. All a prophet before him, they die. Okay, who is Muhammad? And how you say all prophet before him, they die? I thought Jesus did not die. Hmm? Any Muslim can tell us? Who is Muhammad? If I am a person... I'm going to follow Allah. Allah, He sent me a book, a guidance is called the Quran. And now the Quran says to me, Muhammad is a messenger. Who is Muhammad? I challenge any Muslim to tell me who is Muhammad. No answer. The whole Quran never tells us who is Muhammad. Not even once. All what we know from the Quran that Muhammad have no kids. A guy he insulted Muhammad penis. He said to him, "You cannot have uh, babies." That's it. Muhammad is horny. He wanna have any women. She wanna sleep with him. Muhammad he will take the fifth from every attack. Muhammad will not meet you unless you pay him before you see him. That's it. But what we know about Muhammad, nothing. Where Muhammad? Who is Muhammad? What his last name? Who is his father? We do not know. Who is Muhammad? Okay, guys, I I need to go urgent. I have uh, I have somebody is is sick, and he have nobody in his home. He's a friend. Um, he's just texting me, and he need my help. So I have to end this. I apologize. Uh, this guy, he have nobody. He's an old man. He have nobody, and um, he's asking for help. So I cannot, I cannot, uh, um, I can't stay longer. Okay, let me tell him I'm coming. All right. Uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, you know, I would try to do tomorrow if I can. And by the way, I'm working on my book, which is about uh, uh, Islam and the apostles. Uh, I'm really advancing in it. I hope maybe in two weeks from now we will, we will have it ready, uh, written. But then we will do proofreading. Uh, I really apologize. Uh, this guy he need my help, and as I said, he have no family, he have nobody around him. He's an old man, so I will go and see what he he need. And uh, if I'm going to do so tomorrow live broadcasting, you know, please don't forget to subscribe to my Facebook, to Minds.com, and to Battery On, so you will be informed as soon as we are here again. Thank you very much, and may the Lord bless you. Thank you. God bless.